you so much. Uh, that was very kind words. I don't think I deserve all those, but it's nice anyway. <laughs> and it's very nice to be welcome back to Bay, which is uh, it's my part of my home ground, but it was not here I studied, and I come a bit back to that. Um, talking about the maritime industry today is, um, well, that can be short, it can be long, but anyway, it's um, really <coughs> challenging times in some of the segments, and it's extremely challenging times in some of the other segments, because in, when we define shipping, it's also offshore. Uh, so one thing is certain, it's uh, never, never a dull moment. I will uh, go give you a journey today. It's um, in a way from the Vikings to uh, uh, Norway being a dominant uh, party to the world maritime industry. It's from uh, uh, smaller banks in Norway, uh, Bergen's Schilling Bank and DNC to DNB, who's a global leader in ship finance. And it's uh, for myself from, uh, from being, uh, starting with this one, ski jumper to um, on the panel of uh, new shipping and from uh, Bay in 84 to uh, the Lloyds uh, in um, uh, last year. And actually that's my colleague of mine. We, uh, we, had, um, uh, we wrote about the international banks uh, in establishing in Norway because at that time there was a law um, coming up and, and enabling international banks to come to Norway. So uh, we were um, talking about elektroniske banktjenester. I mean, come on, this is uh, 84. So a lot has happened since that time, and um, and we we had to um, we needed money to buy a wardrobe for starting working. So we uh, sold this uh, volume of a master master um, piece uh, to finance our first wardrobe into business. So that uh, that worked fine. So what about uh, shipping? Norway really has a prominent position within this industry. And it's come, it's not come just because it's come, it's really come because of many things. <coughs> just look at the coastline, um, but it's also because Norwegian has been adventurous. We have been uh, focusing on man uh, fishery, seafood has been important. <laughs> we have been sailing out in the world and shipping has, has slowly come into our genes as an important industry. Today, uh, the industry employs more than 100,000 people. So it's a really uh, a, a major uh, industry in Norway and 12% of the value created in, uh, in Norway. So it's, a, it's an industry that has um, survived through tough downturns and happy upturns, but managed to stay. And uh, I would say that um, even through last uh, financial crisis, which also was extremely tough for shipping because the whole world basically fell apart. Norwegian shipping really managed to come up stronger than it even was before. So, so it's, it's an industry we are very proud of being, uh, being part of. And this is uh, then the DNB. So uh, what do we say? Well, this is our strategy. Uh, and, and it's not modest at all. We want to be, uh, we want to be something. So to be a preferred financial service provider and strategic advisor for high quality companies within the global maritime industry. That means you really have to be on your toes because it's not like uh, you just are out there lending. You are a preferred financial service provider, meaning you do the whole breadth of finance financial products, and you're an advisor to the companies on their financing, and it's not like small companies, it's the biggest <coughs> companies out there, and it's a good quality company. So it's a, it's a strategy that's committing ourselves to walk the extra miles, to be amongst the best, if not the best, and I think that makes it also very enthusiastic and engaging for all of us to work in it, because uh, we, need to, we need really to, to do to do our best every day. And um, that's one of my favorite uh, expressions, courage, I come back to that. Uh, to have the courage to be ambitious, to have the courage to walk the extra mile, to have the courage to, uh, to go where you want to go. That's an extremely important part of leadership and also for us to reach our um, goal. <laughs> So what do we do to, uh, to, hand, to be a um, financial um, institution like uh, DNB? We cannot just sit in Bjørvika in Oslo, we have to be global. So we are 
First, this is all the offices for DNB uh, worldwide. But for shipping, we sit in New York and handle Americas. We have offices in Shanghai handling uh, Asia, Athens, absolutely, uh, London. And then we have uh, Oslo and obviously Bergen. So uh, it's uh, that's we are where the fin uh, financial and maritime hubs are of the world to be close to the clients and to be close to the business. And uh, we are 150 people. It might not seem a lot, but we are the biggest institution when it comes to number of people uh, invested in the software for handling our uh, our clients. And it's an industry that to a certain extent looks like this. Not exactly, but we, it's a way we show how cyclical the industry is. It's cyclical, it's capital intensive. And you can just watch these assets, you can understand they are super expensive. Like $750 million for that one. And that's how the industry uh, evolves. And now we are really here for offshore, for offshore drilling, this is supply ships. Uh, and we don't, somebody asked me, is it a U or a V? And I said, it might be an L if you want to be, use the Lester, because it's going to really be long. Dry bulk and container also very much at a low point in the cycle, while you have other segments which are on the higher point. So why is it important for us to understand this? It's extremely important to understand this, to make certain the companies have a good financial profile, financial strategy that they are at the, where they are in the cycle. And to understand the risk for ourselves and for the companies. And to stay on course. Because when there are ups and downs, you cannot just move along. You have to adjust, but you have to know where you're going. So you have to have the courage to know where you want to go and then adjust to handle it as it uh, gets rough. And we all know how rough it can be sometimes. This guy, as all the Norwegians know, he knows about rough weather, but he also knows that when it's rough, there are opportunities. So uh, when he buys, most people should buy, and when he sell, it's a good sign to sell. He's uh, made, he's, uh, extremely, he's an extremely clever businessman, and uh, it's rough out there, and that's also what he, um, what he tells us uh, by that uh, picture. And this industry, as I said, it's very capital intensive and it's cyclical. And capital intensive, I showed you now the, the assets. And historically, if you go this journey, historically, these companies have been financed by banks. One bank, two bank, and spider bank, uh, smaller banks. Then they grew in size, then needed more banks. Then they grew in size and needed to be listed. They needed bonds, they needed equity. But shipping has, it's not an investment grade industry. It's more a higher risk industry. So it's been very much bank finance. But what this trend is showing is that the trend is changing as to becoming less bank and more bond and equity. So the industry is becoming, conclusion of that, or the importance of that is it's becoming more financially sophisticated, less dependent on just banks, but on using all capital markets, which we think is important because then you diversify your fund, funding, funding co uh, co uh, source. And in that respect, you get less risky on the funding and can focus more on your industry. But what does that mean? For Oslo, this is, a, I know these are busy slides and, and I'm coming from finance and you're not so, into all this in daily, but I will just, the point here is Oslo Stock Exchange is an important capital source for the maritime industry. It's next to New York. And I think that's important for this industry has not only built companies, it's also built strong financial sector in Norway and Oslo Stock Exchange has basically um, one third of the, equi uh, of the uh, this is equity and this is bond in, in Norway. So. It's a big industry, it's an international industry, and Norway can really tap so much capital for this company. This is part of the strong position we all build by this um, mar maritime cluster. So it's not just the <laughs> ship owner, it's the banks, it's the brokers, it's the stock exchange, it's the investors, it's the analysts, it's the whole breadth of the service 
to all those companies who really do the business, which is owning the ship and managing this ship. So I think this is something we can all be proud of, that we have managed to build this strong position for the industry in Norway. So what does it take then for a company to go out there and get capital, to get investors, and to have, uh, like you, in uh, maybe not yet, but soon, to invest? Well, you need, you need to start with a market outlook, which is appealing for a Jon Fredriksen or for investors, where there is a potential, not necessarily that it's super going that way, but it's an interesting market outlook. You need to focus on sponsor, owner, management, that there is a solid, good ownership, solid, good sponsor to handle this, take this care of this company. And a new world, a new word maybe for quite a few. If you went 10 years back, we wouldn't even talk about corporate governance. Today, that's part of most core, I would say, that the company really has good governance, good, bo a good board, good um, balance between board and management, and have a structure that is solid. And over time, size and liquidity are important for companies, for investors. If it's too small, it's really too, sometimes too risky. You need to build a certain size and liquidity for investors to come in so they can buy and sell uh, shares. And what did DNB do? I would th you would, I guess, think we are basically a lender. Well, we are a lender and we have a large portfolio of loans to the industry. But over time, that cannot give us sufficient return. Just lending is in this industry, it's so capital intensive. So we need to have a much broader base. So what we do and what we have managed to build is, um, and again, a lot of buzzword for the industry, book runner, mandatory leader, ranger of syndicated loans. That means we are leading, um, we are leading the financing for the companies and we get other banks to join. So when uh, TK Corp, which is a Canadian, one of the biggest tanker companies, are out there to um, invest in some ships, we will then say, well, we can, we can, we can arrange this and this amount, pay $500 million, $800 million, uh, and then we arrange it and get all other banks to come in. So we all together place that uh, in the market for the company. We also are number one, have been number one in global maritime bonds. So placing bonds in, Os in both in Oslo and in the US. So we have a good position amongst the companies of placing bonds. And we also do M&A, merge acquisitions. I mean, advising companies for buying other companies. We have been quite good on that. And ECA, that's export credit agencies. So GIEC, for example, export credits, or Kexim, Exim, the Chinese, Korean, they have money to fund and finance when assets are built, for example, in Korea or, 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 or China. So they come in and fund, assist us in that. Now that's a good portion of money we use. So that's uh, good money to, to add to the pot. Uh, and this is equity. So the whole point here, a lot of best words, but point is we have built a brand and a business which is broad-based product um, to the companies so we can deliver all their financial needs. Then obviously in other banks, institutions, but we can have this breadth. So when we go to a company, we can discuss all the right side of the balance sheet, what kind of funding they need. That gives us an unique position and no other institution actually has built this so far. Uh, some are trying to, or they will come follow this, but we have so far a very unique, uh, unique setup. So about leadership in all this. And I will uh, have some reference to uh, TNB. This is um, uh, part of our leadership. We use cards. Um, and these are our cards. And we had, we, these were introduced a couple of years back. And these, by these cards, we, we use as our vehicles also for, for management. And the three, capital, customer, culture. I have talked a bit about capital and how we use our capital in a smart way to be, towards the companies. Because the, the shipping and maritime industry is very capital intensive, so I have to make certain we use the capital in a smart way and have good return. 
That's also why we have other products that we can actually have a good return. Customer, extremely core. Not every customer coming in the door get become a client. We are very selective because it has to be the client that makes sense for us over time where we add value and we have a good return. So, and we build relationship. If a client comes in the door for our industry uh, and DNB is a client, we should do business with for a long time. So you don't get a, you don't become client just overnight. It takes time to build up relationship and then we really build a good, good business together. And the last card is maybe the one which I think is so important that came on the table. It hasn't been really on the table when you talked about management and business because it's been maybe too soft, but it's extremely important. And I showed you that we are all over the world in, uh, with people and you don't manage a global portfolio client, a global portfolio of team without having a good culture. So, how and how we do that? It's not like easy to say, but we have many ways of um, building culture. And I will just give you some, uh, some examples. Traveling. I was in Shanghai in Singapore last week. London yesterday. You travel a lot to meet the clients and to meet your colleagues, to be with your colleagues in a meeting, to to support them and to, to show them what it's actually the policy now, what do we say now, what is happening in Oslo, what's happening in the industry. You, you, you are around and also to see um, that they to coach them in a way. So traveling is extremely important. Communication, you, uh, we use um, webcast. <coughs> so I have can, I've just started, but we will do that anyway once, maybe once a quarter or maybe often also. Also when we then can go, I can present and we can go through the strategy or changes or what we're doing now on the webcast, all offices in, and they can ask a question. So then we are in a way all like here, but <coughs> uh, in a different format. Um, we have Facebook at work, which is one of the means where we all communicate in the same way. Uh, we gather together once a year, everybody in this uh, industry, in DNB, to sit together and to meet and to, to uh, to, to engage in, uh, in what we are doing for the next year. So many ways of um, managing a group. But this is not just, you don't build culture by sending messages around the world. It's really long investment for, to, to get a good team to work uh, in our industry. <laughs> and this which is, I come back to all the time because it's one of my favorite words for, uh, um, both for success, for management, for personal life, to have courage to do what you want to do, to have courage to stand up. Uh, it's so uh, core. And I think if you look at now the shipping industry, so downbeat, I can promise you, it's now we see who has the courage and who has good management. Because going up in good times, it's so easy. It's so easy and everybody can be like a bit what we call an epic check in Norwegian. Mm -hmm. But it's really now, it's, uh, it's, uh, you see the who's, who's, who's good or who's not good. So, um, this is another quote I like very much. Uh, I used it last week because uh, what we see in the offshore industry now is um, not necessarily courage. Uh, and he says, there are risk and cost to a program of action, but they are far less than the long-term risk and cost of comfortable inaction. If, what's, if you look at what's happening in an industry like offshore now, when not everybody's real, well, now I think everybody understands how challenging it is, but it takes time. And the slower you are, the less options you, are, you have, and the less flexibility you have to take action. So inaction is the highest risk, not to sit back uh, and, and wait. And I would say that uh, courage to keep moving back to the same, that you enable yourself to um, move where you want to go and not sit and wait till it might be easier to have the courage to do what you want to do when you need to do it. It's my, I think it's a, one of them, my preferred words in leadership, 
and and also for my own life in a way don't uh, don't be too shy because uh, you have one life so uh, I have asked four questions because I thought that would give more of an interaction with you and then you could uh, could uh, prepare and I know some of you guys have prepared some questions for me today so thank you Kristen